Okay. All right, so today I figure um, I'd kind of let you in on some stuff that uh, is important to you guys out there who might be representing yourselves, um, and that is depositions. Let me just adjust that. Let's see. Okay. Can't do anything to make myself look better, but at least the camera angle is better. Um, so depositions, they are question and answer sessions, essentially. And uh, I'll kind of give you an overview of the way it works, and then I'm going to tell you what um, I'm doing and, you know, kind of give you some insight. So uh, as you know, aside from, you know, utlradio.com, I also am an attorney. And generally, attorneys are the ones that are deposing other people. But in this instance, there's a situation where I'm going to be deposed tomorrow, and I want to talk to you about my deposition prep because what I'm doing as a witness is going to help you if you ever need to depose somebody or you yourself are going to be deposed. So first of all, let me just give you that basic definition of a deposition, question and answer seminar or session, I should say, not seminar, where you sit down, generally speaking, in a conference room, sometimes in court, but generally it's in an attorney's office and it's you, your attorney, and then the other attorneys. And there's a court reporter. So, you know, the, st the stenographer that types everything down? Well, here's what happens. You are asked questions and you give answers. All of your answers are put together by the stenographer into something called the transcript. It's like a book. And it's got your testimony word for word. What's important to know is that your testimony at a deposition has the same weight and effect as if you were testifying in front of a judge and a jury at trial. So if you're under oath testifying, understand that whatever you say to deposition has the same effect as if you were at trial. And what attorneys use the deposition testimony for is a few things. First of all, by asking questions, they can help sort of flesh out their case, whether they're the plaintiff, and that again is the person that's suing, or the defendant, the person that's being sued. So they can help figure out their case and kind of learn some new facts about certain things. And then they also will take it because let's say I make a mistake or I lie during my deposition. Well, they can pull out that transcript and they can use it at trial to impeach my credibility, to make the jury look at me differently and say, oh God, this guy's lying. So we don't have to believe anything that he says. So that's why, you know, there's this, this deposition process. So um, thanks for the hearts, by the way. Let me just tell you what I'm doing. So I happen to represent a particular company and have been representing them for years and years as their general counsel. Um, so we had a situation with one of their locations where there was water damage and it was a, a multi-story building. Um, it's a re retail building and the tenant above had a water main break that caused flooding down below. So I went there on behalf of the company that I represented to be their legal counsel and to take pictures of everything that I could you know, find, uh, to document everything so that when, when the company, my client, made a claim to the insurance company, we had everything laid out. And it was very clear that we didn't do anything because obviously, even though you have insurance, sometimes if you do something wrong, they take that insurance away. So that's why I was there. And um, that was like five years ago. So what happens is the insurance company who ultimately paid out my client, they now are trying to get their money back from the tenant who was above who they believe caused this water main to break. So I am actually going to give deposition testimony on behalf of the client. And the reason that they want me and not somebody from the company is because it's been five years and the people that were at the company five years ago are no longer there. I'm the only one who was at the location on the day of the incident. I'm the only one that took pictures. I'm the only one that was up in the other uh, unit to look at where the leak was. So that's why they're taking my deposition. So even though I'm an attorney, you still have to prepare to give testimony. And um, what I did is this. I went through my paperwork, anything that I might have had that was relative to that claim. 
And I started looking through things to kind of refresh my memory as to what happened. You know, five years is a long time and a lot happens and I don't, you know, uh, remember everything that happened five years ago. I have a pretty good recollection, but you know, I like to kind of refresh my memory. So I went through to look and see if I had any papers or photographs or any documents and sort of tried to piece together in my mind what happened and, and kind of remember what I did. And I don't write anything down because it's all in my head. I don't want to write it down because if I write something down, then I will have to produce that at the deposition. And I don't want to produce any notes or I just want to be able to testify um, from my memory. And there are going to be things that I don't know the answers to or things that I just don't remember. And when I'm asked those questions at the deposition, I'm going to be truthful and I'm going to say I don't remember. I'm not going to make something up. And that leads me to a very important point. If you are ever asked to give a deposition testimony, whether you're representing yourself or you are involved in a lawsuit and you're being sued, let me just give you a couple key pointers that you need to know. First of all, your obligation, your sole obligation when you're giving a, de a deposition is to tell the truth. That's it. You just tell the truth. You recall what you can, but you don't lie. You don't make up things that you think somebody wants to hear. So in other words, you could be sitting down and an attorney could be grilling you and they could say, oh, you've got to know, you should know, why don't you know? If you don't remember or you don't know the answer to the question, just be truthful and say, I don't know the answer to this question. I don't recall. I don't have any recollection of that. That's totally okay to say. It's worse to guess or to make something up just you know so they'll stop asking you the question. You just want to be as truthful as possible, and that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. So I'm going to be in, uh, in New York City, and I'm going to be giving testimony. I know that I'll be, you know, sitting down at a table with all the other attorneys. They're going to, you know, give me the same instructions that I myself would give if I was taking the deposition. Tell the truth. If you don't know, it's okay to say you don't know. Don't guess. If I ask you for an estimate, then you can give me an estimate, but I don't want you to guess. Um, you know, I want you to let me finish asking the question before you give the answer, even if you know what I'm going to say, because the court reporter can't take down both of us speaking at the same time. So let me ask the question, blah, blah, blah. That's the same thing that's going to happen if you were being deposed. So uh, I'll go, I'll hear the instructions, I'll be sworn in, you know, raise your right hand and, you know, yeah, I swear to tell the truth. And then they're going to start asking me questions. And I'm going to just tell the truth and, and tell them what I remember about the claim. Um, you know, it, it actually has no impact on my client because it's the insurance company who is trying to recover their money. So my testimony has an impact, obviously, on that insurance company. But one of the key things is um, not getting nervous. When you are not familiar with the practice of law and you're representing yourself, you're going to be nervous. I mean, there's no way that you're not going to be nervous. But how you handle those nerves are important because if you give the impression or indication that you're nervous, a lawyer might look at that and say, mm, I don't believe that testimony. They're too nervous, too jittery. You know, I think they're lying. We you know you have to really try to control yourself and kind of just settle yourself. And I think that a key to being relaxed at a deposition is knowing what's going to happen. So that's what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today, what's going to happen, the whole idea of the question and answer, and my preparation for it. Um, again, I've looked through things. I've tried to recall in my own mind what happened the kind of chain of events and then I will go in tomorrow and I'll just tell them the truth, tell them what I know and that'll be it. Now I could be at this deposition for 10 minutes or for six hours. Um, it really depends on the level of questioning and uh, how much information I have. You know, the other interesting thing with the deposition is that the attorneys are allowed to ask you a whole host of questions, even things that might not be relevant so they could ask me about UTL radio, for example, or my practice, or, 
you know, uh, anything that's not really relevant to the to the case. It's not admissible at trial, but they're entitled to ask the questions. There are certain things that are off limits. You know, um, there's been a lot of um, discussions over the last maybe 10 years about requiring somebody to produce their social security number in a transcript because that ultimately becomes public record. So, you know, I think that there are some objections to be made, but generally speaking, they can ask you whatever they want and you've got to answer it unless your attorney tells you not to. Now, I'm not going there with an attorney representing me. I'm just going to go, um, you know, and, and because I know what's going on, I'll just go answer the questions. But it's a unique thing where I, as an attorney, am going on behalf of my client to give testimony. And I wanted to kind of share that with you and just, um, you know, talk a little bit about it. So what I'll do tomorrow is try to, um, you know, do a few scopes while I'm in the city, uh, maybe on my way to the deposition or afterwards, if you think that would be interesting. And I'll let you know what happens and, and how it all goes. Um, so, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to see if any of you guys have questions. And if you do, specifically about depositions or anything related to it, I'll do separate videos, put them up on the YouTube channel so that you have them um, for, your, for your own reference. Before I go, I just want to remind you, make sure you check out the brand new utlradio.com. The website has been completely redone. Um, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's easy to use. And I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. There's links on the website and to the YouTube channel so that you're notified when new videos come up. Uh, that's going to do it for right now. I want to thank all of you who tuned in and, and those of you who um, you know put up some hearts for me. I appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think about this scope and, and let me know what other legal questions you might have that you'd like answered. You can always submit them through the website, utlradio.com. Uh, there's a phone number there. There's email address. You name it, it's there if you want to get in contact with us. That's it. I look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow and keep your questions coming. I'll make sure that we answer all of them. All right. I'll talk to you later.